For me, reading is absolutely everything at primary school. It's the biggest gift that you can give a child because it's a gift that will stay with them for the rest of their lives. In the classroom, I do lots and lots of activities outside the curriculum that fosters a real love of reading and builds a reading community within the class. Liam and good morning Chanel. Right, okay everybody, it's time for our poem of the day. Should we have a little look at the list, see who's on it today? Um, Holly and Flo. Uh, there you are, girls. What have you got for us today? Busy Day by Michael Rosen. Pop in. Pop out. Pop over the road. Pop out for a walk. Pop in for a talk. Pop down to the shop. Can't stop. Got to pop. One of the things we do in this class is Poem of the Day. So every morning a different child comes up or a group of children and they read a poem to the class. Pop over the road. Pop out for a walk. Pop, pop in, in for a, a talk. talk. We don't always read a new poem. It's not always about what's next, what's next. Children love to revisit the same favourite poems again and again. So what have you got for us today? Wishes Child from Macbeth. Ooh, spooky. OK. Round about <laughs> the golden girl In a poisonous child's throat one of the most effective things about doing the poem of the day is the ownership it gives to the children. If they want to perform, they can come up to the class at any time of day and sign up for the day where they would like to read their poem. Double, double, toil and trouble, fire, burn and cold and bubble. <laughs> By William Shakespeare. Another thing I do is recommended reads where the children, after they've read a book, if they really like it and think other people would like it too, I encourage them to recommend it to the class. The book I'm recommending is called My <coughs> Grand's Great Escape. It's by Jeremy Strong and I really like this author. And he writes really funny books that are really good. Okay, so it's funny, right? Has anybody got any questions for Oscar today about My Granny's Great Escape? Who is your favourite character? I quite like um, Lancelot because he's like a really cool guy. The children who are recommending the books get to really understand why they like a particular book. Whenever he says something, he'll make what he said into like a joke. For the children who are listening, it's terrific because it gives them ideas of what to read and it helps them build relationships with other readers. You seem to recognise some of the illustrations, Oscar, is Next, it? Next, we're at um, yeah. Jacqueline Wilson. Recommended Reads really builds a love of reading, a mature love of reading, and that's the kind of culture that I'm trying to encourage in this class. OK, thank you, Oscar. Here in class, I stimulate the love of reading in lots of different ways. I also use the book corner as a significant part of the process. Right, so this is our reading area. Come in and take a little look. On the walls, you can see that this book corner is really all about the children's choices and their input. I've got some of their book reviews up here and also you can see their favourite reads have been immortalised up here on the wall. And that's really nice, it gives every child a voice. Then if we look over here, you can see that what I'm trying to uh, establish is what can you read next? and I'm giving children lots of options so they can independently choose the next read. Because sometimes it can be a bit baffling to have so many books to choose from, you just don't know what's going to suit you. This is an area of the book corner that keeps reading really high profile. Um, it's an area called What Are You Reading? And the idea is that every child has got their own shape that they can take off, and on it they can write whatever book they're reading at the moment. I've even got my own card, and so has my teaching assistant, so that the children can see that everyone's a reader. Not only that, it gives me a really good idea about what the children are reading at the moment, so I know which books to recommend next. What is so great about all these different activities is they all stimulate a slightly different part of the children's curiosity. Um, and all the different things come together to make a big community of readers who can talk about their preferences, who are passionate about reading and just can't wait to pick up their next book. I think a crime scene is an excellent way of motivating children to read because there's a mystery element, a whodunit, and because of that they want to find out, they want to engage with exactly what it is they're reading. 
I set up a carousel of four activities that all help to promote reading in a slightly different way. Throughout the lesson, the children revolve through that carousel of four activities. Here we are. This is the crime scene. In one of the activities, the children visit the crime scene and they come down with the TA and they look around and this helps to sort of set the scene for the crime um, to provide a context for it and also to motivate the children. There's like one mug here and one mug down and two glasses over there. He's kind of spread out. I think the first thing I really noticed was the body on the floor. It was like, it was kind of real, because I mean, like, in all this pro and expecting more stuff, they always have, like, they chalk, draw around the body in chalk. I think having a crime scene is really, really motivational. It helps to set the context for what's happening back up in the classroom. I was just getting ready for bed when I heard the door slam downstairs. It was unusual for people to be leaving the house so late at night, so I rushed to the window to try and see who it was. In one of the focus activities, children are asked to analyse witness statements, and this is essentially a reading comprehension exercise where children are looking for descriptive passages about the possible suspects. Um, Lots of interruptions. Yes. Dark hair. I'll just write dark hair because we don't really need to scream. Mind you, it's important to say that he thought it was important to know. His height. Tall. Dark hair. What they then have to do is to take the information that they've understood from the text and to match that through a bank of mugshots. Peter Smith, he's 32. He's a teacher. And he weighs about 196, which is quite close to 200. Yeah, on Sam Wilson. I think he's the closest because they said about 40. In another focus activity, the children are asked to analyse a different type of text. In this instance, a diary entry written in the first person. Mr Wilson, my neighbour, he is still furious with me for running his dog over with, my, with his motor car. Do you think there's an important piece of information there, Dennis? Is that something we need to highlight? Yeah, he was You do? I chose to stay with this focus activity because it provided an excellent assessment opportunity. Seeing all the children revolve through one activity gives me an opportunity to assess each and every child. I think Sam Wilson was trying to kill um, so, right, the man because of his girls, dog. can you stop yeah. saying You look like you've highlighted an awful lot of the information here. What is quite interesting is that often children will highlight lots of the text. He's Just tell me, Linda, what are the really important then, pieces of information? Uh, the bit that Mr yeah. Wilson's neighbour, yeah. he is still like furious for accidentally running them. over the poor dog. Okay, so how are we going to shorten that into a quick note for our whiteboard? Um, um, Mr Wilson was furious about the dog. That could be a good note. Excellent. Although this is primarily a reading lesson, it's very helpful for the children to make notes because after all, a reading comprehension is essentially children making mental notes and all this is doing is formalising exactly what it is they're thinking. You guys here, you're going to need to come over and set yourself up on the Audacity clip. In another activity, children listen to an audio clip of a witness statement and this is a good opportunity for auditory learners to compete on a level playing field. It sounded like the owner of the house, Samuel, was arguing with a young woman of some sort. I couldn't quite make it out, it was clear. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to give you a few minutes just to talk about what you think actually happened on that fateful night. Could have been Laura, it could have been Laura. Yeah, yeah, I don't think it's Laura because I think, I think it's David Marker. I thought it was really interesting finding out all about it and um, kind of fun as well to solve something. It gives you loads of um, clues on who did it and you just want to read more to find out. Mr Wilson, hey David, hey David Mark. Although the emphasis of this lesson was a reading comprehension, it now serves as an excellent platform to take this into other areas of literacy. For example, the children will write reports from the notes that they've made. Reading webs are a fantastic activity which help to extend children's vocabulary and develop their phonological skills. This lesson, we're going to see if you can use your knowledge of sound digraphs to read unfamiliar words. And we're going to start this by looking at an unfamiliar text called Chomp Chomp Crunch. In a dense jungle in East Africa, far, far away lived a cheeky called Chomps. Chomps. Before using the reading webs, 
I use um, a text which enables me to get an idea of what strategies they already have for reading unfamiliar words. When I got stuck, I broke the letter that I was stuck in into two. I broke into half like crunch. Okay, fantastic. He looked at groups of letters, which is great because that's what I want you to think about today. So what I'd like you to do is look at this piece of text again together and you come to a word where the ch is at the beginning. I want you to colour that in green. When you come to a word where the ch is in the middle of a word, I want you to colour that in purple. And when the ch is at the end of a word, I want you to highlight that in pink. Going to spend the day on a sandy beach. Is that the end? You do purple. No, pink. No, pink is at the end. The text I use have examples of the sound digraph, sometimes at the beginning of a word, sometimes in the middle, and sometimes at the end of the word because it helps children to see how sounds aren't always at the beginning of a word. So when they're looking at an unfamiliar word, they might attempt the sound at the beginning, but it's not always where they might find that diagraph. So what you're going to do is you're going to think about a lot of the words that you've been listening to this lesson that start with ch, have got ch in the middle or ch at the end, and you're going to start to Add these on to your reading web. The reading webs are really useful because what they help children to do is to form new words by using strategies that they already have. Well, um, can you use church? You can use church. And what's interesting about the word church? They've got, one, um, they got CH in the middle um, at the front start and CH at the end. Yeah, so it could go where? Can you can put a line to there? It could, yes, yeah, so it could. In the reading web, I encourage the children to illustrate some of the words because sometimes children can say a lot more words than they can actually read, so the picture becomes the prompt to help them to read an unfamiliar word. Chips and chicken. Brilliant. Both of those words start with the ch sound. Pitch. Snatch. Fantastic. Both of those have got the ch sounds at the end. Kitchen. Um, munched. The reading webs can be used in a range of ways because you can use them with lots of different sound blends and sound diagraphs and to extend the activity further you can look at how suffixes change words in the webs. So it's important that we learn our sound diagraphs so that when we come across them in our reading we use our knowledge of that sound to break down the words so that we can read a new word. Okay, well done. I think you've worked really, really hard on that.